Off camera, I uh, ripped the old inverter charger out. We uh, took it apart, and it turns out there was tons of corrosion all over the uh, all over the control board. There were some capacitors that were starting to uh, bulge, a couple that had actually popped. But as a result, we've taken apart uh, the uh, the housing uh, or the the uh, mounting location, which is underneath the chart table bench. And it all lives under there. I have a temporary inverter charger that's big enough to bring these batteries up quickly and run most of the house. Um, but it's gonna hang right here. It's gonna mount right here. Okay, so that comes right off. And we'll put this somewhere safe. All right, let's start opening up this box here. Big old staples. Okay, does that look like it, Joshy? Yeah. Except the tape. And the top part. Oh, good point. Thank you. Let's see what's inside. Yay! I don't think many people would be this excited about getting a uh, battery charger. Josh, you want to hold the camera for Daddy? Mm -hmm. Okay, because you got to focus it on the center, okay? This thing is wicked heavy. Oh my goodness. This is heavy, heavy. Take it out of the box like that. Oh man. Super heavy, huh? Probably 40 or 50 pounds, I think. Then there's all the brackets and stuff. Brackets and uh, screws and paperwork. Okay. Put it in the box. And then we'll hit pause. All right, let's take a look around this thing. This is the Multi Plus One. Multi Plus Two is out, but it's really hard to get. And I'm in a situation where I need it now, so I elected to get the Multi Plus One. There's not enough difference between the two for me to really care or for me to wait. And that's the bottom right there. Pretty cool. Pretty straightforward actually. Looks like there's some uh, cabling here. We'll have to figure out what that's for. I'm assuming that is the sensor of some sort. All right guys, I'm not going to be filming the entire thing. Um, the entire installation. Um, I need to get this installed and it's really heavy and right now I'm just filming on my phone and it's not as easy to do all of this stuff uh, as some of these big time YouTubers make it look. Hopefully this uh, video will end up being enough information for you to be able to see how to install it and to make We got both battery cables off of the uh, temporary inverter. We're just disconnecting that. I've got the mounting bracket mounted to the um, back of this little uh, divider bulkhead here. And we're gonna take the AC in and out out of the old inverter, put those aside, and get ready to install the new Multi Plus. All right, and this looks like a pretty nice dry fit. You can see the uh, environment that it's in here. Not the ideal environment, if you want the truth. It's pretty warm in here, but I mean, what are we gonna do? I mean, what option do we have? Not much. Okay, the chart table seat cover fits just fine, which is good news. Okay, I've hooked up the uh, battery temperature sensor to the negative lead. And you can see that I've pre-connected it to the, pro the proper um, terminal, T-Sense. And then I have brought an RJ45 cable to the remote port, which is going to go to the Servo GX on the other end and provide all of the data from the MultiPlus to the Servo. And then from the Servo to the panel, which I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, and also from the servo to my phone 
and iPad. And where else? Uh, to the new multifunction display. Painting nuts need to sleeve over the input and the output um, AC wires so that when we put them in, um, they will be secured in place. Okay, we have the line and the neutral in there. And last to connect on the input side is the ground. That goes right in there. All right, we have the uh, input and the output on the AC side is all done. Not too big of a deal. Now we have to bring the battery terminals in and we'll do that um, after we loosen up these nuts on the terminal posts. You may be asking, why I have all four terminals, two negatives and two positives, stripped and ready for action. And that is because we have to power the Servo GX controller somehow. And I was not going to run this all the way down to the battery posts themselves. There's no reason to introduce a really weak link um, by adding another, uh, another terminal connection to the battery itself. And uh, it's just a pain in the butt to get all the way down there. So they supply a couple of terminals, um, probably for additional battery banks, but um, I'm gonna use them because I have one bank right now and one set of battery leads. Torque these down. All right, all the connections are made. Super simple. The uh, positive, the negative of each the uh, battery bank, as well as the power to the Servo GX, as well as the battery temperature monitor, as well as the remote ethernet controller um, cable that runs between the Servo GX and the um, Multi Plus. So let's get this thing put back together. Let's put the cover back on this guy here. Look at that, how pretty that is. Joshua, do you have the screws, pal? All right, boy, let's get those screwed in. Get this thing hung up. Joshua, will you film me uh, mounting this, hanging it up? Yeah. Okay, it's already recording, so just grab it. And don't put your hands in front of the camera. Joshua's gonna be eight years old in a week or so. A week and a half. This thing, I will tell you guys, is massive. How beautiful that looks. We need to tidy it up pretty good. Get these cables all mounted nicely. And then we'll be in business, don't you think, buddy? Don't you think, Joshua? Yeah. Guys, off camera, I uh, plugged in our servo to both the Ethernet, actually the VE bus, they call it, and the power. And look what's flashing Wi Fi and Bluetooth. So let's see if we can get this thing to uh, connect. Guys, well, we have everything installed and working just great. Um, the last thing I need to do is tidy things up a little bit, but I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a uh, demonstration real quick, and we'll wrap this video up. So I have eight house bank batteries. Four of them are underneath the nav station floor, and then four of them are underneath the nav station seat, and then I have my Victron Multi Plus. And then I have my Servo GX, which I need to mount. And then I have my Touch GX that I have to mount as well. This is the old remote control for my failed Xantrex um, 3KW inverter charger. And what a shame when they installed it, they cut this huge square out of this beautiful bulkhead here. Um, so now I have to do something about that. I think I'm going to get a piece of teak, maybe a quarter, three-eighths of an inch um, thick, and then use it to mount my, uh, my Touch GX. The Touch GX is able to control everything that the Servo GX can communicate with. So on this screen here, we, have, um, we can see that it's charging 156 watts, 15.4 volts, 9.9 .9 amps. 
You might wonder why I'm charging so hot. Well, we're equalizing the batteries. Believe it or not, the equalize mode never worked on my prior charger. And so I think the batteries are uh, definitely in need of an equalization to remove the sulfates from the, uh, from the, the battery plates. And uh, let's see here. Move to another page. This is kind of the electrical system overview. And then if you swipe up like this, yeah, come on, make a fool of me here. Maybe I need to be on another page, I don't know. If you swipe up like that, Come on, people. If you swipe up, go to menu, it gives you all sorts of different things. Your fuel tank sensors, battery temperature sensors, sensors. It detected the multi plus. It has notifications, various settings. Um, let's see here. It gives you the ability to update the firmware. I have this connected to the internet and I've linked it with the online portal so that I can monitor what's going on with my boat's electrical system and various other things connected to the servo. Um, literally, I just finished this 10 minutes ago, so I haven't really done anything. But this is just a quick little high-level overview of what this Victron energy system is capable of. And I will, I'll definitely be doing some supplemental videos as I add more devices as I connect my tank monitoring leads to the um, to the servo so I can monitor those from the uh, you know from the portal oh by the way you can also tie this in to your multifunction display now that's my old E120 which is getting replaced and it's getting replaced with all Raymarine Axiom Pro gear I have two Axiom Pro 16s. One of them is an RVX with the um, the high chirp, the one kW chirp sonar. Waiting for um, the new Quantum 2 radar. It's already ordered and paid for. It just needs to uh, needs to arrive. They're massively back ordered, and I'm also waiting for one of the other MFDs. So you can tie all of this Victron stuff into the Raymarine stuff as well. So you can display all of your servo monitoring and charging system and inverting system right on the Raymarine. It's going to be pretty exciting. But for now, that's all I have for you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. And of course, you can like and subscribe this video. It's a great way to support us for free. And uh, once again, this video has been uh, sponsored by MarineMaster.com. And Marine Master has over 300,000 products from over 500 manufacturers. They ship fast, they uh, have expert customer service, and go ahead, I dare you to go visit MarineMaster.com. Your boat's going to love you for it.